Hey, what's going on guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces and in this video we're going to be talking about liquid metal applications on your graphics cards because uh, I had a long term kind of test scenario or I guess a, a, a testing the long term durability of liquid metal on my GTX 980 Ti and it's a blower style card so unfortunately it gets hot and th that's a very important factor in this video. Now I'm just going to talk over um, some footage that I shot while I was tearing it down. But the 980 Ti blower style card isn't a bad card. It doesn't come off a backplate or anything. Um, really dusty when you have it in a mining rig. Liquid metal is a great way to drop temperatures on your hardware. Uh, pr primarily uh, on a usually used on a GPU or CPU. Um, I have a liquid metal problem because I even use liquid metal on my laptop, my Acer Predator Helios 300, and the temperatures are so much better. Uh, the keyboard does get a little bit warmer because it's an aluminum case or a housing of the laptop, but it's definitely performed a lot better. Liquid metal on the RX 5700, if you haven't seen that video, I've done that as well. Um, actually, every application of liquid, liquid metal that I've done on this card, on the RX 5700, on the laptop is in this channel if you want to go ahead and check that out but this is the longest running application the 980Ti has been mining non-stop since mid to early 2017 or early to mid uh, 2017 and that's kind of concerning because if you look right below me the liquid metal itself is kind of hardened and that's not a good thing um, so if you can see how dusty it is as well uh, which I, I usually use a toothbrush, soft bristle brush, but let's see if I can get the camera to focus in this video. I think it took me a minute. But you see that glob? You see how it's hardened? That's not that's not really doing anything. Because uh, what I when I noticed this is when temperatures would just stay the same no matter what, with the fan all the way up, uh, uh, you know, max RPM or not. Uh, you will also see it looks like there's just some thermal paste or something around the SMDs around the GPU die. That's actually, um, it is thermal paste, but what I did is I used nail polish. There's a specific type of nail polish that Gamers Nexus recommended. I have it as well uh, that I utilize to protect the SMDs just in case some liquid metal does spill over. That's how you protect your SMD or components around the GPU die or CPU um, if you do delid your CPU. And the nail polish protects it just in case anything, you don't want any contact made. So cleaning it off, I just used a basic uh, coffee filter, some rubbing alcohol. But when it came to the actual heat sink, it, I had to do something special. Uh, let's see if, uh, so I rub off most of it, but it was some hard, some actual clumps of liquid metal that hardened into a solid object. And liquid metal will reform. If you, if you, if you heat it up again, it will reform. But because I put this 980 Ti to the side, because I upgraded to the 1070s and stuff like that, I haven't had an opportunity to use it again. I just took it off the mining rig. It's very high power consumption uh, for not much uh, profitability. So I just put it to the side and the liquid metal just sat there and, and hardened. So you don't really want to do that. If you're going to use liquid metal on your GPUs, you're, you're pretty much going to want to run those and maybe change it every year. But this is what, 2020 now? So that's a three year application. Uh, three years and with it sitting on the side for a few months, it, it got to a hard state and was no longer cooling anymore. Probably could use more. You could see that a rubbing alcohol, um, whether you're using a paper towel or a coffee filter, is not doing a dang thing. It's just so hard. And so I went out to my main area and I got some sandpaper. And let me go ahead and let that play for you real quick. I'm going to grab something because I'm going to show you the nail polish. So I had to sand down, make that smooth again, because you don't want any rough uh, pits or high spots. And here's the nail polish. I'll have it linked in the description below. But that's the nail polish you're looking for. Uh, it avoids certain chemicals. Sally Hansen. It avoids certain chemicals uh, that I would recommend. You know, making sure just you don't want to get just any clear nail polish. You want to make sure. 
It doesn't have a particular chemical. I forgot the name of it. Don't quote me. It was on a Gamers Nexus article. But I'll have a link to this particular product down in the description below, as well as the Thermal Grizzly Conducto Knot that I use for this application and Cryo Knot, because that's what I went back to. Once I got this all leveled out and, and kind of cleaned up, it is going to stain the copper heat sink, and you don't want to use liquid metal with aluminum. If you're new to the gaming, mining, uh, computer technology, hardware space, period, do not use liquid metal with aluminum heat sinks. It will eat the aluminum. Okay, uh, but once I got everything settled, I cleaned it up again. It is going to stain the copper heat sink, whatever, not a problem. Uh, I don't care about the uh, cosmetics on the internals, we only care that thermally it's going to work well. So, Thermal get... Grizzly is one of my favorite uh, cooling thermal, uh, thermal paste applications. They even have a thermal pad application, but uh, once you get everything cleaned up. Thermal Grizzly is very good for everyday use, Not doesn't cure, very good uh, watt per meter Kelvin uh, dissipation, and conductor knots even better, but I wouldn't recommend it for 24-7 everyday use, uh, maybe for getting some like extreme overclocking done, or if you really, really need to drop temperatures on something like this 9TI, I had to drop temperatures on it. So you can see here we're putting on the cryo knot. Uh, good application on there doesn't have to be perfect. I know some people get all crazy when you put a little too much Let me see show you how much I exactly put on there just to make some of y'all cringe worthy There you go. That's that's the amount that I put on there connect the fan uh, four pin fan connector Slap everything back together and the screws are very easy to access because there is no back plate on this GPU uh, There's a total of let's see here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen and then two on the front uh, twenty one total uh, very easy to take apart just when you pry up make sure you don't pry too hard or too fast you don't want to rip any uh, connections that you might have on your GPU and now the GPU is all that back together and, and matter of fact um, let me go ahead and get everything back up and running. I will say that the temperatures were very concerning. At stock, while gaming, we were hitting 80, even with the fans up to 75%. Um, so let me go ahead and put up some numbers for you guys. Uh, after I do some testing, uh, we're gonna be comparing what the temperatures, the temperatures normally were like 90, 71, 72, 73 while in uh, mining. I suspect it's gonna go back to that because this card, as far as the blower style card, does not as efficient I would recommend getting a replacement cooler or even liquid cooling it but in short just to close out this video liquid metal applications do need to be replaced do not think that you can leave it on there long term especially if you are using it for mining if you are using liquid metal to cool your graphics cards during mining you're gonna bump into an issue during the long term durability you're gonna bump into an issue where it may harden on you or it may not dissipate heat as well uh, especially if you have a, a situation to where that mining rig shuts down for a while or you take that card off and you leave it off to the side don't just put it back in because uh, that liquid metal may not liquefy again and dissipate the heat as it's supposed to uh, so as uh, many as suggested including gamers nexus steve burke replace your liquid metal application maybe once every year uh, do not leave it long term, but I just wanted to test it out and see how it would perform after three years and it lasted pretty much two two years two years and eight months two years and eight months and uh, After that it, it was just it wasn't cooling as effectively anymore. So it was time to go back to a standard uh, But good thermal pace and that's pretty much it. I wanted to share this information with you in the community I hope you have a wonderful day whether you're a minor gamer or just a tech uh, hardware enthusiast liquid metal is a great uh, way to drop temperatures on your CPU or GPU uh, but for long-term use this is what you're gonna see this is what you can can expect so be aware of that and make sure that you uh, regularly clean and maintain your your cards whether you're a miner or not now I know there was some dust on the internals of mine but I do blow it out it's just some areas will not be able to be cleaned unless you tear everything down which 
I do practice every once in a while. Do me a favor, guys, on the way out, hit the like button, subscribe for more content like this, and I will catch you in the next one.